Hello there, welcome to another brand new episode of Decoding the Unknown. As always, hello, I'm your host, Simon. What happens here is Katie writes me a script. This one's Skinwalker Ranch. The only thing I know about this, <laughs> this, uh, this episode is that Skinwalker Ranch, I feel, is a super clickable title. I'm sure it's some, like, nonsense about ghosts at some old ranch or something, and there was a haunting about this, and it's like, yeah, 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 but there wasn't. <laughs> I don't know. All I know is that that feels extremely clickable, and as a good YouTube capitalist, you gotta make those clickable video titles so people discover your stuff. And then I'm like, Simon, did I just click on this video about Skinwalker Ranch? Wanting to watch something about Skinwalker Ranch where, you know, people embrace the idea that ghosts are real and that all this spooky shit actually happens. And I'm like, yo, 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 plenty of spooky shit definitely happens. But it's probably not ghosts. That's kind of our premise here at this show. Uh, Katie writes it. I'm going to read it. And then Jen afterwards is uh, she's going to do the magic. The video editing magic, that is. Audio. Visual elements, if you're watching this. If you're just enjoying it in its audio form. As I often say, I'll paint a picture in your minds. Or more precisely, Katie will, because I just read her words. I'm just a good... I, I just read. That's all I do. I don't even read particularly well sometimes. Let's go. First, I'd like to start with a poem titled For Simon. Oh, how exciting. <laughs> Raindrops on roses and sightings of cryptids. Ghostly encounters with crazy old dipshits. This is very nice. I have to say, I love reading poems. Um, it feels a bit, I don't know. <laughs> I don't want to say sad because that's the sort of thing that I'd say as a 14 year old. But I really enjoy um, my my two year old daughter. It's her birthday today. Woo! Um, she has a book. It's like a Winnie the Pooh book. And it's this giant thing. And it's full of these really nice stories that I vaguely remember from my childhood. I also didn't realize quite how much poetry there was in there. And I'm really enjoying reading this poetry to her. This sounds like the most dadsy thing ever. <sighs> This is like, if five years ago someone said, hey, hey, fat boy, you'll enjoy reading your daughter childish poetry. I'd be like, ah, you must be smoking the crack. And here we are, <laughs> 2021 Simon, enjoying reading his daughter childish Winnie the Pooh poetry. It's really nice. What are we doing? Uh, oh yeah, crazy old dip E.T. and Nessie. Oh, I'm sorry. This is still part of the poem. <laughs> there was an extra line break in there. I'm sorry, Katie. I ruined your poem. I'll take it from the top just because I'm awesome. Raindrops on roses and sightings of cryptids. Ghostly encounters with crazy old dipshits. Etie and Nessie and stuff with big wings. These are a few of his favorite things. I mean his favorite things to shit on, am I right? And that's the end. Now, if you know Simon at all, then why wouldn't you? Is he some sort of omnipresent YouTube overlord? Albeit of the benevolent kind, we hope. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's the image I spill. Uh, spill. <laughs> That's the image I present. I'm a malevolent overlord. I'm on my path, you know. You, have you seen, like, that Wall Street movie? Is it Wall Street where they do that hostile takeover? And it's like they buy that guy's company out from underneath him? That's how I'm doing it with YouTube. Obviously, I can't afford YouTube. It's probably worth, like, a trillion dollars. I'm just gradually just making so much content that it'll just... I'm glad you asked that because I wanted to take this time to explain my evil plan. This is obviously a joke. I mean, <laughs> do you need to clarify that fact, boy? You have any idea how much content is on YouTube? But that's what I'm doing. Eventually, all YouTube content will be fact, boy. <laughs> You may be familiar with his stance on ghosts, Bigfoot, and all things paranormal. So I was kind of surprised to see the suggested topic. But hey, maybe he's mellowing in his old age. I don't know. I just saw this. It was probably even on YouTube. I just... Because when you have a channel to, called Decoding the Unknown, a lot of your recommended just become videos. And I'm like, there were lots of people talking about Skinwalker Ranch. And I was like, that sounds creepy. Oh, what have I done? What have I done? <laughs> or maybe he's fancied being an extra scathing to a weird story that's been floating around since the 1970s. Yeah, that sounds more like me. Or the reality is I just didn't do very much research because I'm lazy. Uh, whatever the reason, let's find out about the folklore, legends, and modern day history behind the place best known as Skinwalker Ranch. The Rise of Skinwalker Although it sounds like the settings for a Star Wars porn film. <laughs> Very good, Katie. A Skinwalker Ranch is a ranch, funnily enough, on about 512 acres of land, not really located near anything much in Utah, USA. It's part of Uinta County. Thank you for the pronunciation guideline, Katie, because I definitely get that wrong. 
an area which for which about the last 50 years has been a veritable hotbed of paranormal activity and sightings of ufos well i want to say like i absolutely believe in ufos ufos are unidentified flying objects and you can you bet your you bet your bottom dollar there are tons of those especially like in the us the cia or air force or whatever they're always experimenting with new crazy sh they've got a ton of cool toys that we don't know about and some of those probably fly we know this because years later we find out about it when you know do documents are declassified there's freedom of information requests someone slips into the u.s budget or whatever it was about telling us all about the ufos <laughs> kind of legendary but we're all going to be disappointed has that even come out yet i bet it has and we and, and nothing was made of it because you know there's nothing there except for what was it experimental test plane okay it wasn't aliens well when i say veritable hotbed i mean some paranormal activity just some we'll get into all the weird goings on on the ranch in a minute so let's first talk about the thing that gave it its nickname the skinwalker it sounds pretty creepy and it really is a long time mainstay in native american folklore the skinwalker is a shapeshifter who can take on the form of or possess other people and animals it's not a nice shapeshifter either similar to a werewolf it's big aggressive and almost impossible to kill without exactly the right weapon in this case you need a knife or a bullet tipped with i'm gonna turn over the page and I feel like it's going to be silver because that's the vampire thing, isn't it? Oh, no, sorry, white ash. Well, at least that's easier to come by and cheaper. In the animal form, it seems to favor it as four legs and large glowing eyes. It's so feared by the Navajo tribe in particular that they don't even like saying its name in case they inadvertently summon it. So what's it doing terrorizing a farming family in the middle of nowhere? This is one of those things where it's like, I don't believe in any of this stuff, obviously, but I keep saying skinwalker and I'm just alone in my dark office. And it's like, I, I, I mean, there's like a 0.0001% chance that there is a beastly creature behind me right now. But I'm absolutely looking at my little camera monitor down there. And then I'm like, but what if it's a vampire? You know how vampires, they can't be seen in mirrors. They can, is that right? They can't be seen in mirrors or on cameras and stuff. So I'm like, ah! and I know this is so stupid. <laughs> it's so stupid. <laughs> but why? Why do I still get that feeling? Terry and Gwen Sherman bought Skinwalker Ranch. And now I just heard a creepy sound. <laughs> it's the middle of the day. Why am I scared? This is so stupid. None of this is real. Oh my God. Okay. But murderers are. There could be murderers in my locked office <laughs> when no one else is. Terry and Gwen Sherman bought Skinwalker Ranch in 1994 from original owners Kenneth and Edith Myers, although presumably it wasn't called that at the time. Well, Katie made that joke for me. I was absolutely going to make that joke at the end of the sentence. Almost immediately, they were plagued by weird things happening on their property. The first of these were UFOs. The Shermans had two children, and all four family members reported seeing at least three different types of UFOs multiple times over the course of their stay at the ranch. Ah, young children. Super reliable witnesses. According to the Derrissard News, who published an article about the ranch in 1996, the UFOs were, quote, a small box-like craft with white light, a 40-foot long object, and a huge ship the size of several football fields. They've seen one craft emit a wavy red ray or a light beam as it flies along. They've seen other airborne lights, some of which have emerged from orange circular doorways that seem to appear in midair. These doorways in the air led some people to believe that they were portals to other dimensions and that the skinwalkers and aliens were able to come through them. It's like, yeah, yeah, what's that, a light in the sky? I think the obvious conclusion here, that that is a portal to another dimension. Wrap up the investigation, boys, we're done. UFOs weren't the only strange thing afoot at the Sherman Ranch in the mid-90s. Crop circles, we had cameras in the mid-90s. No photographs of this, guys, no videos, nothing. Anything? No? Okay. Crop circles and strange imprints in the soil also appeared during the Sherman's tenure, and there's the skinwalkers themselves. But we all know crop circles. Sorry, this is me. I was reading it in my reading voice. <laughs> we all know crop circles are nonsense. I made a video about this on my Today I Found Out channel about these crop circle dudes who were like, they were making the crop circles all over the UK, and everyone was like, they're aliens. It's the only explanation is that aliens make these. The, the stalks are like heated and they fall down. And now it just turns out it was two dudes who just meet up and they'd make these big geometric patterns just by mashing down the, the hay. The hay. The, uh, the corn or whatever whatever it is that make they make crop circles and wheat i don't know i'm not a farmer i don't know anything about this and for the longest time i thought corn was wheat because where i grew up there was a big field uh at the back of the house like off the back of the garden and uh the first year we lived there wheat was grown in the field 
no i'm sorry corn was grown in the field this is i don't know why i'm telling the story but i'm gonna finish it now because i've already committed i realize it's really boring <laughs> so sorry uh a corn was grown in that field for the first year and so my parents always just called it the cornfield it was the cornfield but then every other year that we lived in that house wheat was grown or something that looked like wheat i don't know maybe corn was also but i just remember it just being wheat and so my whole life even though wheat was grown like growing up in the house even though wheat was grown in the field we called it the cornfield and so still as an adult now 34 years old i'll see wheat and i'll be like oh that's some nice corn <laughs> Ah, oh, because that's that's what I really thought that for for a very long time. What are we talking about? Oh yeah, so crop circles were all faked, and then I even made that video, and someone took the liberty of emailing me, being like, "Simon, uh, actually, crop circles are real." I'm like, my dude, the guy who started crop circles came out and said it was fake, and they're like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah," but the le the ones after that were real, and I'm like, "What are the f odds of that, mate? Come on." <laughs> Living up to their legendary personas, the Shermans say they encountered a wolf on their property shortly after they moved in. Well, that sounds entirely possible. It wasn't just any wolf. It was about three times the size of what you'd normally expect. Well, that sounds less possible, but not impossible. Terry Sherman shot at it at least three times at close range with a rifle, but it apparently did no damage to the creature at all. Sounds like Terry is a bit of a sh shot maybe it would have been a different story if it had some white ash handy but unfortunately we'll never know as well as all this scary stuff the shermans also heard voices in the dark these were reportedly male voices but they were saying things in what sounded like a different language the shermans investigated but could not find where the voices were coming from and the dogs they had with them started going mad and ran back inside so terry prudently followed and then came the cattle mutilations oh my the shermans noted a relationship between the sightings of lights in the sky and the mutilation of their cattle. Whenever a light appeared, a cow seemed to die. Or could it be that the skinwalker was targeting them too? This is the problem when you start mashing these things together. It's like, yeah, yeah, there are lights in the sky and skinwalkers. And uh, when the lights in the sky appear, also the skinwalker animals come out and mutilate the cows. So you're just mashing together skinwalkers and UFOs? It's like when people mash together the conspiracy theories. It's like, yeah, 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 Lee Harvey Oswald, he didn't shoot JFK. And you're like, okay, okay, I mean yeah probably not i mean maybe who knows i'm open to the possibility that's in the realm of maybe and then they're like yeah 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 but it was actually uh, a big cover-up by the clintons and they've been going over it to this day and john f kennedy is coming back to life and then you're like well <laughs> whoa, whoa 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 why are we mashing these together because now it's impossible to believe According to the article in the Deseret News from 1996, the first cattle death at the ranch occurred shortly after the UFOs had first been seen. The cow had no obvious cause of death. There was no blood or tracks or footprints anywhere. The only sign of injury was a hole in its left eye and a weird smell in the air. Another cow was found shortly after with another hole in its left eye. The same chemical smell and disturbingly, a one-inch hole carved out of its rectum. Oh, <laughs> it's extremely specific. That's a large hole. I mean, that's a one-inch hole carved. And what does carved mean? It sounds like just surgically doing like a perfect circle on a cow's rectum. I'm like, <laughs> it's just a bit weird. I guess that's what the aliens are into. Or the skinwalkers. They're like, no, 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 I'm not interested in eating that entire cow. I'm just going to carve out a one-inch hole in its rectum. Hmm. <laughs> okay. This apparently is a classic sign of cattle mutilation, which I never realized was a specific thing, because <laughs> it's not. I had heard of cattle mutilation, but just thought it was dogs or people doing awful things to cows because they're easy targets. I didn't realize until researching this that it's a phenomenon in itself. What? Coming to the fore in the early 1970s, referring to these 1970s instances across the US, Encyclopedia.com explains it as follows, quote, In many instances, the dead cattle appeared to have been mutilated by precise surgery in which certain parts of their body, usually eyes, ears, mouth, rectum, or sex organs, had been removed and the carcass drained of blood. No footprints indicating mutilation by humans were found around the bodies. This sounds exactly like what the Shermans were, sorry, end quote, this sounds exactly like what the Shermans were dealing with in the mid 90s, and they thought that they might have interrupted whatever it was before it could finish mutilating the cattle even more. The problem with this is it's not like the serial killer thing, where you know the police, there'll be all these bodies, and the police will be like, okay, well, we'll keep this one thing about his MO secret. So uh, if there's a murder, we know whether it's by the original person or by a copycat killer. The problem is with these cattle mutilations, everyone's going to be talking about them on like. I don't know, the 1990s version of internet for Usenet forums? I don't know, it's kind of before my time. 
We'd like Geo. Did Geo Cities have four? No, that was where you build a website. I don't know. Whatever forums were. <laughs> get, get off that tangent quickly, Simon. It's absolutely irrelevant. Whatever the forums were about, there's definitely people talking about this. And then the problem is, once it's out there, people are going to be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. They were mutilated in exactly the same way because then it spreads this legend. But unless it's kept quiet, it doesn't really matter. Like the crop circles being, you know, happening after. If they happened before the big guys faked it, obviously that would be a different thing. But if it happens after, it's fake. Just, I mean, just probability-wise, it's fake. The third dead cow they found seemed to have gone through the whole process, though. Sorry, everyone. The Sherman's son had seen the animal alive and well, and apparently just a few minutes later it was dead. The same chemical smell around it and no blood, footprints, or tracks to be seen. This one, I have to quote the Deseret News article again to give the full effect. Quote, Had a 6-inch wide, 18-inch hole deep carved out of its rectum and extending into the body cavity. Holy s***. <laughs> How is that even possible? You gotta be using some weird tool. That just sounds horrible. Oh, ugh. Why? Cored out. Ew. So evocative. It's a well known, I hesitate to say, fact that. Don't say facts. <laughs> that aliens seem to like a bit of anal probing. So, is that what's going on with these poor cows? Yeah, it's a bit weird, isn't it? Aliens have this magical technology. And by magical, I mean science technology, because in this story, it's real. Um, in the story I'm telling right now. The aliens come, you know, all the way across the galaxy or the universe or whatever and they come and visit us on earth and they take a very keen interest in our bums <laughs> so okay <laughs> makes perfect sense they're not here for like gold they wouldn't be here for gold that's a ridiculous thing to say but you know it happens in movies and books or water or food or enslaving us no 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 they're just very interested in our bums <laughs> makes perfect sense doesn't it conspiracy theory people oh but i know my cousin's aunt's mum she was abducted by aliens and probed Anally, it's like. <sighs> Deep sigh. What kind of information can an alien race get from the bum of an animal that just stands around eating grass all day? It's like, yeah, we took a huge sample of its bum. The Shermans also just lost cows seemingly into thin air. This would. They would ride around looking for them, find cow prints in the snow, and then they would just stop with no animal at the end of them. Terry also noticed broken twigs around the area. The cow prints stopped, and even the tops of nearby trees being broken. Perhaps understandably, all these weird experiences didn't really endear Skinwalker Ranch the Shermans that much. They had taken big financial hit with their missing and dead cattle, and psychologically, they were all getting pretty spooked too. When the news article came out in 1996, it caught the eye of Nevada businessman and dabbler in all things paranormal, Robert Bigelow. <laughs> Reminds me of that Deuce Bigelow, male gigolo. Was that a follow up to a movie? I never, I don't think I've seen it, but uh, it sounds bad. In 1995, he had founded the National Institute for Discovery of Science to discover. <laughs> That sounds like exactly not what you're doing, mate. To study all kinds of weird stuff and the goings on at Skinwalker Ranch definitely fell slap bang in his weird wheelhouse. But also Weird House, sure. He bought the ranch from the Shermans in 1996, although Terry Sherman at least remained on as caretaker for the day-to-day -day running of the place. It became Bigelow's ground zero for paranormal activity research, and he and his team set up all kinds of surveillance equipment around the ranch. During his tenure, Bigelow's team noted over 100 incidents of weird stuff happening. They ranged from more cattle mutilations and odd spikes of radiation to the resident biochemist, for it was a very serious and scientific setup, seeing a large human-like figure in a tree. I mean, that's entirely possible. We can definitely see things that aren't there. Probably happened at night, didn't it? The biochemist Dr. Kelleher even wrote a book about his experiences on the ranch called Hunt for the Skinwalker. I wonder if he could have had some other motivation for writing that book. Perhaps, uh, oh yeah, there's this thing. Um, money. Money. The, that could be a, another <laughs> In it, he describes the penetrating yellow light of the unblinking eyes of the thing in the tree. I do wonder sometimes, sorry, just go off on a little tangent here. Like, this unknown mystery stuff does incredibly well on YouTube. And I know, <laughs> I probably, if I was a, you know, an absolute sellout, and I'm not saying I'm not a little bit of a sellout, because, you know, you gotta make that bread. But uh, if I was an absolute sellout, this would be a video. This would be a channel all about talking about how Skinwalker Raj, absolutely real, ghosts are real, aliens are real. I've been probed multiple times in the bum by aliens. Please don't someone sound grab this and put it on Twitter because I don't like it when people take me out of context. Although I think most people understand that I've been taken out of context when I say that I've been probed anally multiple times by aliens. Obviously, <laughs> it's not real.
He shot at it, as you do when you see something large in a tree at a distance from you, and while not harmed, the creature jumped down and ran off. Kalahar went and checked the grounds where it had landed and saw what looked like a bird of prey, maybe a raptor print, but huge, and from the depth of the print, from a very heavy creature. Ultimately, Bigelow sold the ranch on again in 2016, this time to the mysterious adamantium holdings he made quite a pretty penny too he bought the ranch around two hundred thousand dollars in 1996 and sold it for 4.5 million dollars two decades on damn that's a good investment not much was known about adamantium holdings to begin with and the ranch was promptly hidden away behind gates barbed wire and no trespassing signs oh that is kind of weird though isn't it there were rumors floating around that elon musk was behind the purchase but it's since come to light that the real estate developer brandon fugel is now the proud owner of the keys to the world's spookiest ranch it seems that he's eager to cash in on the reputation skinwalker ranch already has as adamantium holdings have registered the name as a trademark for the worlds of recreation and entertainment and also recently filed another application to stick the name on all sorts of merchandise that you would associate with a tourist attractions gift shop oh no is this guy gonna be like ah simon you violated my trademark you said skinwalker ranch he's gonna be taking down all those you can you tr i mean if if it's if it's a word before and it's in common lexicon can you trademark i guess so i guess so i'm not particularly worried to be honest <laughs> So, maybe Skinwalker Ranch will be opening for business in the near future and you'll be able to buy your very own Skinwalker Ranch branded apple corer or maybe not. I'm still thinking about the description. Yeesh. There's also a History Channel show called Ah! Ah! Oh my god, History Channel, what actually happened to you? <laughs> what happened to you? I like to think that I mean, I'm sure it's not true, because History Channel's obviously a huge channel making a ton of money. But I like to think that all the disenchanted, disenfranchised, disenchanted people with the History Channel who realize that it's a piece of shit, allegedly. I mean, in terms of their programming, which is what they do. And again, allegedly, in my opinion. Uh, I'd like, you know, what I like learning about on the History Channel was history. What I don't learn about, like learning about is fake aliens and skinwalkers and all that nonsense. I like to think that people who originally like the History Channel like my stuff. Hello, friends. People who like the History Channel now are probably like, ah, this guy's so skeptical. What a dick. But that's okay, I don't need you. There's also a History Channel called Secret of Skinwalker Ranch, which started in 2020, and it's currently two seasons long, as well as all the mis previously mentioned paranormal gubbins. The team now researching the ranch have also come across electromagnetic spikes, malfunctioning electronic equipment, and even injuries associated with radiation burns. So how do you explain it all, huh? I imagine fairly easily. Let's go. I mean, and even when there's not an explanation that is obvious, it's like, well, it's not ghosts or aliens or th 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 werewolves or whatever. Explanations. So what do you think was going on down at the old cattle ranch in the middle of nowhere? We've got UFOs, crop circles, cattle mutilations, and skinwalkers. I mean, were there really interdimensional portals opening up and weird creatures popping through to rip out cow anuses and freak out the locals? When you put it like that, it seems a little far-fetched, I'll admit. However, there have been many, many reports by locals of various weird lights and shining things in the sky over the years. Even the original owners of the ranch, Kenneth and Edith Myers, mentioned seeing lights in the sky, but there's no reports as to whether they experienced any of the other phenomena that the Sherman did. I also feel like if their cows were having their butts cored out, that that would have somehow made the news or a police report somewhere. Also remember, UFO stands for Unidentified Flying Object. It doesn't necessarily mean it's our alien neighbors buzzing over for a look-see. It means you're looking at something in the sky and can't immediately identify what it is. Yes, which is why I fully believe in UFOs. Funnily enough, I also absolutely fully believe in aliens. Like, I definitely think there's intelligent life out there in the universe. I just don't think it's coming here and taking our bu butts away. The Deseret News article mentioned that the Shermans had taken video footage of the UFOs, but as they don't seem to be plastered all over YouTube, I wasn't able to find them and watch them. Most sightings of so-called UFOs turn out to be weather phenomena, military tests, or something mundane like balloons or funny-shaped clouds. That's not to say that the good people of, oh, Uinta, I already forgot how to pronounce it and I don't have a guide, but Uinta, maybe? Basin were, were mistaking shooting stars for alien spacecraft, but as with most of these things, there's never been any decent footage or photos of the events. But let's hold our skepticism in check for just a mo and try and see if there are any other explanations for the weird events at Skinwalker Ranch. A non supernatural look. Ah, nice, warm, 
comfortable place to start. It's possible that the Sherman family were suffering from some sort of delusion or group psychosis, maybe brought on by seeing something that they couldn't explain at the time. Maybe the land they owned has areas where toxic gas comes up and made them all a bit loopy, who's to say? I mean, yeah, we've covered it before, like carbon monoxide poisoning is a very reasonable explanation for why people think they see ghosts. It's like they're being poisoned and their brains are going funny. And I'll say it again, if you are listening to this show, is have I brought it up on this show? Maybe I brought it up on this other show. If you're listening to this show and you don't have a carbon monoxide detector, put it away, go onto Amazon and buy one right now. Maybe several for your house. Because carbon monoxide is crazy. It's such a crazy thing. And if you don't have one of these, just uh, it's irresponsible this would mean that any other weird stuff that came up while it might not be totally supernatural would just feed into their warped beliefs and in not any stories they told about events on the ranch would be coming from a place where they believed them to be true and were not purposefully trying to deceive anyone i think the vast majority of this stuff is people aren't purposefully trying to deceive anyone they want to believe they see something then they they mash those two things together i, I don't think obviously it, also, it starts generally with malicious people but i think the vast majority of people they believe Believe it. They're not trying to trick anyone. They're, they're certain. I don't think they're making any money from it, which is always a good motivation, as we've discussed. I don't know how likely this is, but if they were a tiny family, I guess it's possible that they all just fed into the paranormal explanations and thought things were really happening when they weren't. If they repeated stories many times of the large wolf, let's say, it's hardly unusual that people start exaggerating more and more every time they roll the story out until a larger than average wolf takes on supernatural proportions. Let's look at some of the events with our rational faces on and see if they can be explained in any other way. The first one up, crop circles. While they have apparently been around for ages, I seem to remember crop circles having a bit of a renaissance in the 1990s. If you're not familiar with them, when viewed from above, they're intricate geometric or symbolic designs made by flattening crops in a circular pattern, hence the name crop circles. Before it was embarrassingly proven that these were easy for a couple of people armed with nothing more than a rope to pull off in an evening, they were thought to be messages from extraterrestrials. So yes, having a crop circle pop up on your property isn't a reason to call the papers these days. Maybe the Shermans did it, maybe someone else made one on their property, or maybe it was just the way the previous owners plowed their fields. Moving to skin, yeah, we've addressed crop circles, I don't feel I need to elaborate any further there there's the interesting story about the two british dudes but i've told that already so let's just move on moving on to the skinwalker itself aka the big wolf maybe it was just a big wolf sherman might have missed it when he fired or maybe it was wounded but he just didn't notice in his panic he did not actually report it shape-shifting or vanishing into thin air so maybe it was just a very large animal that was attacking his herd and then ran off or yes it could have been a shape-shifting demon from another dimension I need to be balanced here. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's a big wolf. Or, or maybe, you know, just for fairness. <laughs> no. Those voices Terry Sherman heard that sounded like men talking in another language, it could have been a group of men talking in another language. Acoustics can be weird, so they may have been in a spot that wasn't where Terry thought they should be. They could have also been overhead, flying past in some sort of small aircraft and using a radio, coded language or not, in English. Yeah, but if they're in an aircraft, I bet it's going to be like, I mean, aircraft are really loud. You're not going to be able to... I mean, pilots and stuff, when you're in a small craft, you have to wear headsets so you can hear the person sitting bloody next to you. It's loud. And how about cattle mutilations? I doubt the Shermans were deliberately killing and carving up their own herd, but most signs point to human or animal rather than paranormal perpetrators. This kind of behavior is usually pinned on cults or deviant weirdos looking to mess with people while committing their nasty acts. If not carried out by a human being with a bag of tools, there are also many normal explanations for the state the cows are left in after a supposed mutilation. The lack of blood is explained by the fact that when a cow dies, it will be lying down. The blood stops pumping and gravity just draws it away from the surface, making it look bloodless at first glance. The dead cow can bloat with gas, causing its skin to tear, making a slit that could be described as a surgical incision. If that's what you were hoping to find, that's what you will probably see. From there, your common or garden perpetrators and insects can get in and eat the yummy organs inside, leaving you a very mutilated bovine. There's also a cover-up explanation for cattle mutilation. While we mentioned that the Shermans were aware of UFOs from a cow's death, other ranchers in areas of the US, like Nebraska, were aware of helicopters in the vicinity before an animal death. This led them to blame the military and or government for using their cattle to test experimental or biological weapons on. Guys, this just seems so unlikely, because you know what? 
i mean i'm sure like for a small farmer a cattle is like expensive but for the u.s military if they want to shoot cattle they will just buy cattle they will just buy them they will buy them until the cows come home <laughs> but a bob because the military have loads of money and they're not going to risk it why would they risk going out in a helicopter and testing a weapon on someone when they can on someone else's cow when they can just have a cow and do it in area 51 or whatever why because it's fun after ranchers started shooting at the helicopters they were ordered to fly at 2000 rather than a thousand feet so it seems to vary from state to state as to what those flying objects are perceived to be i'm not even very convinced by the electronic equipment malfunctioning and the radiation injuries suffered by the latest team on the ranch or at least that they have supernatural causes i saw a clip of the secret of skinwalker ranch show purportedly showing someone's smartphone going haywire yes the screen was kind of scrambled and they were exclaiming that it had bypassed the pin code they maybe it had facial recognition so just looking at it would have opened the phone yeah it's like who's bypassing the pin code you're in some field and the aliens are like oh let's definitely have a look at what's on their phone that sounds important and interesting <laughs> And also the screen was very cracked which tends to mess things up a bit anyway i damaged my phone recently and while the screen didn't crack there was a dead brown line in the middle meaning that almost everything i tried to do resulted in a lot of mistakes and not a little swearing yeah that's the thing isn't it like the <laughs> my phone's going haywire it's like yeah your phone screen's cracked and every time you press it it's just going mental so yeah his phone looks pretty broken to begin with also this guy goes by the name dragon which when you're a fully grown adult it's just not very cool so how about those radiation burns one investigator got small lesions on his hands and head after opening the cover to an old water storage tank in the grounds and a device he was carrying told him that he'd been briefly exposed to a semi-dangerous amount of radiation the marks were later confirmed by a doctor to be radiation burns while this is strange it is not paranormal maybe there's some old weapon buried on the farm and the team are just digging a bit too close to it or it can be like some old medical equipment or anything that emits radiation it's not just bombs it's not aliens there could have been an underground atomic bomb test that sent radiation through the ground and water of the ranch then there's there's always an undercurrent of shadowy governments or military cover-ups with this sort of thing so if we can't put the radiation down to a hidden weapon or previous test gone wrong or something we can also maybe explain away a lot of the ufo activity as military drones tests experiments etc some people believe this points to a ufo being buried under the ground at skinwalker ranch though which would be really amazing to research if the clods currently owning the land would only dig a bit deeper to do some sort of scan or even just stick to one task at a time yeah if there's an un like if you're the person just go digging just go digging get some radioactive protection equipment if you really think it's i mean it probably is necessary also you should definitely have whoever deals with radiation cleanup in the u.s have them out to your place because radiation burns that sounds like that's mega dangerous like someone should go out there and clean it up the government should probably be aware of this no you're like oh the government they're the bad ones well i mean okay so pay for the radiation cleanup yourself but try and clean it up maybe that might be smart especially if you're going to turn this into like a tourist attraction the ufo sightings are the hardest things to just shrug off however the area of utah is known as ufo alley because of the many and varied sightings that people have experienced over the years and people will swear up and down that what they saw could in no way be explained by anything in this world so what other options do we have to explain all these phenomena just lies question mark the sherman family bought skinwalker ranch in 1994 before selling it in 1996 after the newspaper article came out oh you think they're purposefully making it up to increase the value of their property i didn't even really think about that i mean i guess it did increase a lot in value to the person who bought it to turn it into like a weird theme park but i'd be like sure nah people people don't want to buy it because there's the cows getting torn up the owners before them while apparently also bearing witness to some ufos as per normal for the area did not report anything else odd happening they owned the place for 60 years before selling it so it seems unlikely they'd put up with over half a century of being scared out of their wits before deciding to move on so did the shermans just make the whole thing up looking to bolster the already paranormal reputation that the area had yes it's quite possible that they did make everything up okay yeah before i was like nah 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 they just bought this place but then they you know and then it's just this delusion they see what they want to say see they believe what they want to believe but two years is a really short time and then they got their newspaper article done and the fact that it did sell for so much more i mean not that they really got the benefit of that 
but still i mean yeah fair enough that that seems pretty pretty reasonable we only have their word for any of it, and there is no photographic or video evidence to back up their stories. That one article in the Deseret News hooked them a big fish in the form of Robert Bigelow, and Terry Sherman even stayed on to work at the ranch after he sold it, which is hardly what you would do if you had been terrorized by strange forces for the past year and a half. A lot of the stories coming out of the ranch also came from just Terry, and perhaps he stayed on to add a few more experiences to the mix to stop Bigelow realizing that it bought the place. On a lie. So was Bigelow just a gullible fool? Probably. No. Oh. <laughs> you kind of think that a guy, you know, he's got enough money. Oh, wait, this isn't the guy who bought it for like millions. But they said he was a successful businessman. You kind of imagine that it's like, you know, even if you believe in all of this stuff, when you're buying a property, you're going to be like, well, let's, you know, have it evaluated, see what the real value is. And then I'm interested in aliens, so let's bump it up by 10%. Not like, to the point of you getting super ripped off. As previously mentioned, his team did report over a hundred instances of weird stuff happening, but as always seemed to be the case, nothing found was strong enough to actually present anywhere, either as science-based anomalies or evidence of paranormal activity. It's pretty infuriating when people have the ways and means to record things in high definition 24-7, but any footage actually taken in cases like these is always far too far away or really poor quality. Of course it is, because if it's good quality or close, people are like, oh, it's a plane. It's a weather balloon. All of this stuff is always like, why? Why is it so bad? On the History Channel show, you can see apparently very intelligent people like astrophysicists, investigators, and dragon pour over grainy surveillance footage and make acutely astonishing observations there's one instance where the team are reviewing footage of a cow before it was found later dead and the man on the controls points out a black thing in the sky and someone's expert opinion is it looks like an object above the tree <laughs> these shows are so bad but they must spend so much money it's crazy i'm in the wrong business <clears throat> I need to get into conspiracy theories and UFOs, damn. Other startling observations include such gems as could be natural or unnatural. I don't know. <laughs> uh, ah! It could be an alien or not an alien. Uh, great, thanks for that. Other episodes show them using metal detectors which seem to go off in weird places where they've dug a hole. They're not allowed to dig any deeper though, as the owner of the ranch only lets them use a mini excavator to conduct shallow digs in area of interest. I mean, what's the point in that? Well, I suppose it leaves just enough mystery to keep you intrigued. Also, no one seems to notice that the metal detectors tend to go off whenever they're swung towards the large metal blade of the digger they used, which is handily kept just out of shot. Other comments on these videos point out that they're using practically the cheapest metal detector that money can buy, not really using it properly, and it's not well suited for whatever task they're using it for. I mean, if there was decent footage of even one UFO thing, it'd be making headlines all over the place. Rather like the Oak Island mystery which we've already covered on this show, it seems like the revelations, if any, are going to be eked out as slowly as possible when a TV crew gets involved. A TV crew from the History Channel. Yeah, that Oak Island one, it's like they started making a TV show about the hidden treasure on Oak Island, the History Channel this is, and it goes on for many seasons, and it's all just like so drawn out because I gotta squeeze as much content as possible from something that's not even real. It's ridiculous. Oh, spoiler alert, if you haven't checked out that episode yet. Yeah. Oh yeah. Spoiler alert for the uh, Oak Islands. Although this one will definitely air afterwards, so... I mean, you could have stumbled across this, that's entirely possible. In which case, good news, there is an episode that is already spoiled, uh, which we did a few weeks ago. It's all true. Ah, of course, the easiest way to explain all of the activity at Skinwalker Ranch is that it's all true and for some reason nobody has been able to capture decent footage of the cattle mutilations, UFOs or skinwalkers in the last 25 years that the ranch has been under surveillance. <laughs> Maybe it <laughs> seems likely, doesn't it? Maybe the government is censoring everything and just letting some unconvincing actors play real-life researchers on TV to keep their audience happy. Yeah, entirely, that's okay though. I mean, it's kind of bullshit that they make it out to be fact and it's on the history channel but i love fiction tv i watch far more fiction tv than i watch non-fiction tv and i mean i'm not gonna watch this because i don't like want to watch something halfway in between pretending to be real but i well isn't that kind of reality tv anyway i mean it's all kind of like half fake i remember i was on a game show when i was a kid and it was just all set up and fake it was a crap game show and it was i don't know it was it was just like they're like, yeah, 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 okay, so you guys need to come third. You guys need to come first. And it's like, 
what? What's going? Okay. <laughs> it was just faked. The whole thing's faked. Like, just like modern history channel. Jeez. In an interview with Tech Buzz, current owner Brendan Fugel stated that he was a healthy skeptic when he bought the ranch and thought there was a 95% probability that we would not only reveal that there was a conventional explanation, but also that it would be very well revealed as nothing more than a scientific snipe hunt. A snipe hunt is a wild goose chase, by the way. Okay, I'm glad that was explained. I had no idea what a snipe hunt was. Six months into his ownership, however, he and another group of people witnessed a UFO, which he describes as a classic flying saucer. It moved around with incredible speed before zooming off, which flipped a switch in Fugel's beliefs. He is now 100% certain that UFO activity is being covered up, and we're not alone in the universe. I'll tell you what, I don't know what this guy's reputation was before buying this, but if it was me, for example, if I was the one who went out there and bought this thing, I feel like I've got enough of a reputation, enough of, like, history to back me up being like people know simon is massively skeptical not 95 percent 99.99 percent sure that there is a rational explanation for everything i don't know if this guy before had any sort of reputation for being a skeptic or not believing in any of this stuff but i feel like i would be taken more seriously if i went there and i was like yeah i saw a ufo I really would like to explain that because so far it's pretty unexplainable. Like, that is weird. Um, but that's not going to happen because I'm not going to go and spend millions of dollars on some ranch for nothing. And I'd also be shooting myself in the foot financially because I'd be like, yeah, why is this place super expensive? Oh, because of all the hauntings. So I buy it. None of the hauntings are real. And then I have to sell it for like $200,000 or whatever. And I lose all my millions. And it's like, that's a bummer. Don't do that. So once again, there's a there's a financial incentive for this guy to be like, ooh, UFOs! That being said, Fugel is still apparently giving 95% of his time to his real estate business and just popping over to the ranch every now and again on his Airbus H-130 helicopter. It has not been noted whether these visits coincide with any cattle deaths, but wouldn't you think that a multi-millionaire who has gone on the record saying he saw a UFO would be a bit more interested in poking around? And he was so careful to keep his identity hidden at the start of his tenure using NDAs and shell corporations to buy the ranch, but as soon as the TV show came sniffing around, all of that just went out of the window. And I take back the jabs I made about Dragon earlier. During the Tech Buzz interview, it turns out that someone online misidentified the head of security at Skinwalker Ranch, whose real name was Bryant Arnold, as this dangerous ex-military guy whose code name was Dragon. Fugel thought it was hilarious and basically made everyone call Bryant Dragon, even though he hated it. So, yes, apologies to Dragon. We're so sorry, Dragon. <laughs> Despite how this piece may have come across, I'm not a cynical person. I like to think there is mystery and more out there and totally open to the possibility of alien life in multiple dimensions. Me too! Absolutely open to all of this stuff. It's just that there's absolutely no proof of any of that here. It would be the coolest and probably most terrifying thing ever if there happens to be a centuries-old UFO crashed under Skinwalker Ranch, but after looking at the evidence we have today, is there even enough wiggle room to keep the possibility of extraterrestrials or shape-shifting demons alive? I'm not sure. Whatever may have happened in the past, it seems like Skinwalker Ranch is now being cynically milked by the entertainment industry at the cost of some poor sacrificial cows. Yes, this has been an episode of Decoding the Unknown Skinwalker Ranch, which I uh, fairly feel fairly confident in the uh, in saying that we shit all over that, didn't we? That was a. Uh, that it just seems to be utter nonsense. And as I always say, I do believe. Like, uh, uh, like Fox Mulder, I want to believe in aliens. They're just not here. I want to believe in alternate dimensions. They're not here. None of this is here. I'd like that. I'd like that. Maybe one day. But not today. And this has been an episode of Decoding the Unknown. Thank you so much for watching or listening, depending on how you get this show. If you're listening as a podcast, subscribe. Leave a review. Why not, eh? You probably haven't reviewed podcasts in the past. I don't think I have. <laughs> and that doesn't really sell me asking you to leave a review, but maybe this is the one that you do want to leave a review for, and it would be awesome. Thank you very much. And uh, or if you're watching on YouTube, smash that like button. Make sure you're subscribed, and I'll see you next time.